Well, hello, fellow vintage enthusiasts. Jim Messina here once again. And as I told you in the last video, the next one was going to be about some wacky drums, wacky drum sets and wacky ideas. And that's just what I have right here. You know, as collectors, we move on in stages with our collecting. You know, you first start out, you're all enthused and you're looking around for drums at antique stores and flea markets and all that. And you do run across things. They may not be all that, you know, valuable, but they're vintage, they're old, and, you know, you're still learning about how to do this. So as you move on, they get kind of shoved into a corner and you don't know what to do with them. Uh, sometimes they may be part of a deal or someone just gives it to you. Uh, they don't know what to do with it. And you know that it, it is old, it's vintage, and shouldn't be totally destroyed. You, you've got to do something with it. But it has no real collectible value uh, uh, in the market today. So what I've done uh, a couple of times, this is not the only thing, this is a project I'm working on now. Wacky as heck, I'll tell you. But it's an idea I had to make a big, giant uh, Ralph Smith set, like from the 30s. I had seen it in, I don't know if it was John Aldridge's book or one of Rob Cook's book. It had, you know, Tech Tom's, and uh, glitter and appliques on a diamond appliques and all kinds of stuff like that I was going to make. So somebody gave me this big 32-inch bass drum. Uh, it, it was a real shame. Someone had made one of those stupid drum tables out of it, a, ta you know, a coffee table out of it. And that's what they did. They had drilled holes and it, just, it was just... A travesty, okay? Even though it's a big albatross, a giant 32-inch bass drum, but um, I'm not even sure what make it is. I don't know. It's it's an orphan. I, I believe it was a marching drum. It had one of those big eye hooks in it, and inside you can see the block mounted that supports that eye hook. So it had it had the hoops. It had flesh hoops, which I have packed away because I'm going to send them out. So anyways, here's my idea for this set. I'm going to take the 32 inch bass drum. I've been working on it, plugging all the holes and I'm going to use these long rods which were, you know, of that era with center posts all the way around. And this drum came with one of these neat wooden grommets. Okay, now that's an antique thing. That's pretty cool. That fits, well, you can't see where it goes, but it's, it's, it goes right in there. These are valuable. I think uh, the Eames Company makes these now, but that's great. I was going to cover this. We were going to cover it in uh, white. Well, I was originally going to use a glitter to cover it. But then I saw this. <laughs> you know, this came along after the idea of covering this in white marine pearl. This is, is an original Ludwig and Ludwig tack bottom tom with T handles you know sometimes they call them timpani handles uh, great pig skin head so what I'm gonna do now is model the rest of the set after this one drum and the way I'm gonna do that is by covering this of course in, in, in a large diamond white marine pearl and uh, nowadays you can get yellowed wrap before, it was very hard to get yellowed white marine pearl. You'd get antique, or you'd have to use continental white. But uh, now they have something called color wraps, and I've been looking into them, and they have all the hues, just like when you go to the paint store and you see all the different hues, the same thing. So you could probably match this yellowing here. So that's what I plan to do, even though it's very expensive, and I don't know what to do about that. But here's what I'm going to do to get this look out of the toms. Okay, now I found these old shells. One I believe is a Leedy, the other is an old Slingerland. They were beat up and uh, the paint was all peeling. It was just, they were unsavable. So I've dedicated them to this set. They were going to be orphans. And what I did, <clears throat> and here's how I'm going to get this look. This is a Rogers bread and butter or a Rogers bow tie bass drum. T rod with the claw. This is an original Ludwig 
uh, lug. You don't see those anymore. I can't find them anywhere. But those are the ones I'm going to use on here. I'll plug this hole. This was a hole that was used for some weird time out that I, I've never seen before on a Ludwig. So that's going to get all fixed up. And Patrick again, my wood guy, the, the guy in the shop, made room for, for, in, for uh, inlays here. We're going to put glass glitter inlays here with tact, just like the Ludwig right here. See? We're gonna we're gonna simulate this whole look, and I've got an idea of how to simulate this too. This is stretched over the edge of the shell. The head comes back up over the hoop, and then is tacked. I'm gonna simulate that look by using the Hida hoops. Uh, I believe you can get these for precision. Uh, I think, and what they are, it's a hoop that has a cutaway underneath. All right, I don't know how good you can see it, but it, it hides the aluminum edge of contemporary hoops. So it will look like this. And what I'm going to do when I cut the calfskin that I happen to have for these bottom heads, I'm going to use the leftover rings to just decorate the edge of this to simulate the pigskin being wrapped around and then I'll tack it. And then of course they'll get covered in uh, a white marine pearl that's been yellowed. And it's going to be a fun project, but it's something to do with orphan drums, you know. And it's going to be a big grand old set. The other thing that's going to really make this set is this is going to be on the front head. Now you may have seen this head before. This is you know, I have a vinyl cut out of this. Uh, I think it's a leady head. And you've seen them there on eBay. You know, every now and then one of these will come up, but it's going to look cool. Uh, I've managed to get goat skin heads. That's why I have the flesh hoops uh, packed up already. They're going to get sent off to Cooperman. And he's worked out a deal with me where he's going to make goat skin heads for this because, to tell you the truth, Calfskin heads would be ridiculously expensive for this 32-inch and a bass drum, and you know, for what I'm going to use it for, I don't think that's necessary. I'll get the look. I'll even take them on jobs with me, and I think they'll attract attention. So, keep in mind that your orphan drums can be turned into some wacky project, wacky drums like this. So, there's a little wacky thing for you, all you collectors. Uh, Stay tuned for the next video because I also did this with a set of rolling bombers. Okay? So this is Jim Messina once again. Check me out at GUMPH, G-U-M-P-H, 1234, for some more vintage videos and discussions. And just go check it all out. See you later.